A new 2024 study has revealed that suicide is the number one leading cause of death for AAPI youth and young adults. And this is a tough topic to talk about, but we got to discuss. Yeah, we got to talk about it. The headline reads, Asian American young adults are the only racial group with suicide as their leading, leading cause of death. So why is nobody talking about this? There's a ton of articles about this. Um, unfortunately, Andrew, suicide rates are actually rising for a lot of groups. However, for Asian Americans, it's the only, it, it's the top reason for death between five and 24. Right. And uh, we're going to be talking about it because I think that, obviously, we know that in the Asian American space, uh, and especially amongst families, particularly mental health is not really talked about. So obviously, we I don't know what we can solve, but hopefully this discussion helps because we do have a list of things that I think you should think about when it comes to Asian American mental health. This is a list that we came up with after doing some research and obviously based on our own experiences. Right. So please make sure you like this video and share this because this is a topic that is considered taboo in Asia. And I think that that's what transfers over to Asian America. Right. And, and not only is it taboo amongst Asian Americans, I mean... A lot of people on YouTube bleep out the word that we're saying. Like, we're, we're just saying the word, and, and a lot of people are, you know, bleeping it out. So, anyways, it is kind of taboo even on certain platforms. Right. It seems like right now the overall culprit that a lot of people are identifying right now is social media. And this is not necessarily for the Asian specific, but I'm saying for the rise in in all suicide numbers. Yes, especially amongst the youth, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, you can see there's this other stat that says Asian American males in grades nine through 12 were 30% more likely to consider attempting uh, as compared to its white male student counterparts, you know? So right. Asian American males and Asian American females have thought about it a lot. Um, I think the rate of people thinking about it and considering it is obviously much even higher than the people who actually go on and carry out the act. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely something that a lot of Asians have gone through, at least the thought of it. Right. Uh, here is a breakdown for typically what is uh, causing it for Asians. Because I found two different studies. One is very uh, generalist for the whole population of America, but the one that is Asian specific from a test says, cognitive impairment, family expectations, that's huge for Asians, economic hardships, Social, gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, lack of insurance, cultural beliefs about help-seeking behaviors, distressing mental health conditions such as depression, schizophrenia, and ultimately, Andrew, they came to the conclusion that it is an intersectionality of factors leading to suicidal ideation and behavior. Mm. So basically, it's a combo. Wow, okay. And of course, other people have been blaming TikTok. Um, I read this other article that is blaming white supremacy. Now- I disagree with the the the, sec, the 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 author of this article that says it's blaming it completely on white supremacy. But I do think that in a white dominated society, even if Asians have suicide as an issue within the community, it's not like uh, any big grants are going to be given from the government to like research that. Yeah, because because we're such a small minority group, our concerns may go overlooked. Well, and guys, I'm you know. Not to say that it is not an issue. I do think that mental health needs more funding, but I'll tell you this. A lot of people are asking why young American men across the board of all races are doing it at a high rate. I mean, Professor Scott Galloway, who we've covered on this channel, is famous for kind of pushing this through right now as I'm going to play in this clip. When we say young men are themselves at three times the rate as young women, we use terms like accountability or say things, well, if they just opened up more about their emotions or they need to get their act together. And that is, we've decided when it comes to men, compassion is a zero sum game. And that if you feel bad for men, it immediately kind of outs you as someone who might be anti-women or who's gone red pill. But yeah, I think we just got to talk about Asian specific issues. Like it says, it, it, I think America's got a lot of problems right now, more problems than it had a decade ago. Mm -hmm. But exactly. I do think that people write it off when Asians commit suicide because they think that they're just like, oh yeah, they're, those are just overachievers and maybe they just put so much pressure on themselves when their life's not going perfect with the grades or the academic career accomplishments, then they can't handle it. Right. I think that that's how other people would perceive it. Yeah, I mean, I think that when it comes to something that you did to yourself, obviously some people feel like uh, 
it doesn't need to be as studied as much because it's something that you did to yourself versus like you doing to hurting other people, right? Right, right, right. I think it's a, the main things that I want to identify before I get in the list is probably having nobody to talk about it. It's just uh, a feeling of otherness in mainstream American society, obviously depending on where you grow up, feeling like you have no social value. Um, maybe just Asian culture in general, specifically East Asian culture does seem like it leans into sadness mm -hmm. a little bit. That's that's yeah. like an overlooked thing people don't want to talk about. And maybe just general repression of your feelings. Yeah. So anyway. Shame. I mean, dude, family shame is a big part of it, you know. So I guess uh, let's get into the list of things that you should keep in mind or things that you might want to keep in mind when thinking about Asian American mental health. Hopefully this video has been helpful so far just even talking about it so far but if you you know know someone or you're a young parent or you know someone in, uh, having issues or you have issues you know uh, maybe this conversation helps yeah just trying to talk about it in a normal way because yeah. it's a real thing so it doesn't do any good to pretend like it's this like boogeyman that you can't mention exactly. point number one uh it may be the number one cause of death amongst 15 to 24 andrew amongst asian americans but it also actually has to do with how low the Asian American rates of death due to accident, vehicular homicide, and regular uh, violent homicide are. Right. So I think the ranking of it, number one uh, leading cause of death, I, I, yeah, I do think it's important, but it's not as important because the other people, like, for example, white young males, they, it ranks number two as the number one, number two leading cause of death. And for black young males, it's number three. So it's ranking high for all males and all people. Honestly, right, right, right. You say in a way, I'm not saying it because it definitely needs to get addressed, but it has to do with almost like how low the overdose deaths are in the right. AP or, AAPI or the homicide and accident deaths are uh, in other groups that is much higher right, than right. Asian Americans. So anyways, number two, uh, you have to remember that it does have a lot to do with how we don't address mental health in the Asian family or in the Asian community or Asian culture. And I mean, this is nothing new, but obviously it is kind of hard to talk to your parents about this kind of thing. I would say, honestly, if you're an Asian kid having troubles at this point in time, unless you know your parents will for sure understand, but even if they if they don't, they might not even be the best person to bring this up to right away. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, and this is something that I didn't really see mentioned in the articles because it may be taboo to mention, but the suicide rates in East Asia are actually pretty high, specifically in Korea and Japan. And uh, there's a saying in Korea, you can't change a person. It's easier to change out that person out of your life. Uh, so it's, it's, it's like... It's a very competitive society over there. Everybody wants to be the best at everything. And that has led to some really great outcomes and great products. But it really doesn't bode well for, like, if you're having mental issues, feeling inadequate. Right. Right. And I guess, David, some people find it pretty interesting that since the suicide rates in Asia are so high, and yes, Asian Americans being raised by Asians from Asia, but that it still carries over kind of, even in America into a different context. Right, right, right. And we're going to explain that in point number three. Uh, Asian Americans are a very small minority in the U.S. So, Although you, growing. Yeah, although growing. So you could grow up essentially around no other Asians, and they may lack the knowledge basis of mental health within the community, and they may not feel necessarily comfortable pinging with other communities to go seek out that help that has that knowledge basis around them. Mm. So let's say, for example, you're growing up, uh, it's a small collection of Asians in your town. You, maybe you guys all go to church together. That mental health knowledge does not exist within that micro fishbowl. And then you may not find those intersectional pings with people outside that have the knowledge. Mm. Or they might not relate to you too. Right. And I think that definitely there are more Asian resources amongst a larger Asian community, right? Like more mental health talk when the community is so big, perhaps. But if the community is small then it's like, if there's only a hundred of you, what are the chances that you guys are talking about it? Right, but this brings us to point number four. Even within an enclave community, people may not check up on each other in a Western style. Mm. You, you see what, I'm, Andrew, what you're referring to is like maybe in Irvine, California, where it's like a lot of Asians that want to eat Asian food, but I guess address mental health like Western people. Right. That they, they might be able to get help, but in a ultra traditional enclave, it might replicate Asia where nobody talks about mental health as well. Yeah, so I, I think there's, unfortunately, Asian Americans are in this situation where the thing, the dynamics from Asia are still carrying over, and then also you add in the dynamic of being a minority in America, and maybe that's why the suicide rates seem still pretty high. Right. 
Point number five. Uh, this is a more controversial point, but I'll just keep it real. I do think that Asian culture, specifically East Asian cultures, whether it's Confucianism or I don't know what it is, you can even look at the paintings from thousands of years ago. Uh, there is like a um, like a sadness to it, mm. or like, like a people, solemnness. Like, like a lot like of the a... ba- ballads are sad. Like tr- people just, I don't know. It's just yeah. a lot of Asians like sad EDM. Yeah. I don't know. There's a I have to just say that the, the Asian, East Asian culture specifically is like sad. Yeah, I think it's very serene. I think it's a lot of like balance of calming. It's not necessarily jolly is not the word I would use to describe. Even, you know, there's not that many yeah. paintings of like laughing groups and yeah. parties. It's a lot of like staring out to the to the river that's still and just like contemplating. No, so the, it is it is very heady. Stuff. It's very heady and like internal. And not only that, and I'm by the way, I'm not like overrating that or overstating that. I'm just making a point here. But also that could make it so it's like if somebody's more quiet or reserved or withheld or needs help, people are just like, oh, that's just how you're normally supposed to be. So it covers it up too. Mm. So no, because people like, I think if like you come from a very gregarious culture and you're very quiet, people might ask you what's wrong. But if you're Asian, it's like already introverted already. Right, right, yeah. Like, hey man, how come you're not laughing, huh? Come on. And then, uh, you know, that whole conversation would start. I mean, there's this thing called hidden ideation. I don't know. This is a term for coming from this world that I just learned about. But it's referring to the phenomenon where AAPI individuals may not show visible warning signs before a suicide attempt. And so therefore they don't really have like, they don't really make a, uh, a cry for help as much. Right. They just go ahead and do it. And you're like, whoa, this came out of nowhere. Right. This, that's why they say right here, there's a critical need for culturally tailored early detection and preventative strategies. Right. But, I, but I, I will I, say this. Like we got to get better at just asking people something that's very uncomfortable for people following traditional cultural values. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes it is communicating because sometimes how else do you know if the person's having issues unless you just ask them, right? You know, and you're able, like, guys, again, listen, I said this, like, I think, and I'm going to get to it, I think there's a lot of resources nowadays, and I think that if you feel kind of disconnected from your parents, you're saying this stuff to your parents may not even be the first thing you want to do if you're having these thoughts. You know, there's a lot of resources online and a lot of community online for that too. For sure, for sure. Point number six, I think that, a lot of times, like Asians, we also got to take a look at our androgen levels, which are like our body chemicals. I think that that is a new field of research that has to have more importance placed mm. on it. A lot more supplements, B12, you know, vitamin D, things like that. We have to take a look at our sleep patterns and we got to just take a look at the physical side of it. Mm. You know what I mean? Because some kid, I don't know, I, I don't know the stats, but like, if you're just staying up late, you're gaming a lot, you're watching a lot of shows late at night, I would imagine that if you already have, let's just say, a, either a predisposition or you're in that a bad brain space, that's just going to exacerbate it, mm. right? Versus like getting exercise and getting a lot of sun and, and just getting off the digital world. Yeah, some of those old school things, you know, it sounds old school. Oh, get some sun I and mean, get some sleep. It's like, Actually, I guess the science shows that those things are pretty important. Right, right, right. But you could even get more granular oxygen intake, right, things like right, that, right. like using more scientific breakdowns of the old world wisdom. Point number seven, I think that traveling to other countries is really important too. Like like we're saying, like sometimes they were saying that one of the main reasons, obviously there's a ton of reasons that all come together in a mishmash, but is the uh, acculturation or the clunky assimilation process leads to a lot of depression amongst Asian Americans. Yeah. And again, that, that's multiple factors. It's tough because in Asia, they still are going through this similar issue, but maybe for different reasons, right? Because everybody is Asian out there. Now, I guess you could still feel othered in Asia because not all, not all otherness is related to being a racial minority either. Right. You know what I mean? So those kids are clearly feeling some type of pressure, but um, the fact is that there's the Asian reasons from Asia that kids are doing this. And then there's also this minority American reasons, which is feeling like, oh, I'm out of place or like people don't care about me in this place. And like, I look different or I'm getting made fun of, or I'm being bullied uh, over the internet or I'm being bullied or, in real or, life. Right, or people just know me for being like this academic workhorse yeah. and nothing, I have no yeah. other value. And, I, and that. I think traveling, it could be traveling to Asia or just traveling out and like leaving your environment is really important um, and seeing different things. For your mental health? Yeah. Yeah. For sure, for sure. I, you just got to break the cycle of uh, whatever is like, 
a break from the cycle, right, break right. from your daily life. Point number eight, I think it's, it's you got to unlearn unhealthy coaching from your parents. Yeah. And uh, obviously, dude, it doesn't mean resent your parents because they brought you, uh, you're a second generation immigrant like us, they, your parents made a lot of sacrifices to bring you to America. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that their word is gospel. You know what I mean? You can learn the work ethic and the sacrifice from them. But in terms of mental health, that is an area where I would seek out other accredited people or people with like a really good reputation in media or YouTube or in person. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, I know it sounds crazy, but like on Reddit, there was actually a lot of Asians who discuss this and their mental health issues and their struggles. And there's a good support system on the subreddits if you're Asian. Also, there's a lot more therapists of Asian descent in America now. So, you know, you're not short of the resources. It's about whether you go and get them and I'm not saying all the resources are 100% great, that they're going to work perfectly, that you're just going to talk to a therapist for one hour and then you're going to flip the switch and be like, oh, I'm fine now. It's not going to work that easy, but that you got to reach out and get it. And there are a lot of healthy spaces online. And I'm saying you go back online in the healthy spaces online, not like not your gamer world or your necessarily your discord. You got to leave that and you got to go talk to strangers who have been through the same thing. Uh, I got an Asian therapist, or when I did go to therapy, I found an Asian therapist, and I have a good black friend uh, in L.A., and he told me that he was going to a number of, like, you know, white female therapists, and he had a really traumatic upbringing, and until he got a black therapist, they, uh, they weren't able to really, like, fully understand where he was coming from when he was, like, talking about his issues. Yeah, no, listen, the messenger matters. Uh, point number nine, um, I think I see if if you are a parent and you see it in your kid, you got to take more personal responsibility than just uh, taking them to the local mental health center. Um, I think that could work, especially if it's a, a very high ranked uh, mental health center that has a uh, culturally relevant, like deploying th th those tactics that are like, make sense to people's like subcultures. But it's like, you might want to like, just spend more time with your kid. It's not just about investing money and putting your kids in like programs and stuff or, or if you're with them, but you're on their phone, are you really there? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think it's about like having a hardcore real relationship with your kids. So if the kid is saying something, you can actually understand where they're coming from rather than just be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? I don't know what's going on. But it's like, if you spend enough time with your kid, you would have an idea of what's wrong. Right. Possibly. You know, and, and I think that obviously communicating with your child and then obviously communicating with other adults. It is different. So yeah, it's a tough thing for uh, parents. You know, uh, I can't say I'm a parent yet and going through this yet, but uh, I would say that, you know, how do you communicate with your child and make sure that they know that they're valued? Yeah, do you, do you know how your kid is spending their time? I mean, like, are they just up late at night consuming games and diff watching? You don't even know what they're watching. And it's like spirituality. It matters too, because obviously if you take a look at uh, people's, Religion, typically, they're, they're born into it, like if you look at the statistics. And uh, number 10, I think you can arrive at the same reason from a completely different life. And, th and that's to your point about uh, Asians in Asia having high suicide rates sometimes, and then Asian Americans, it being the number one uh, cause of death. And I think that somebody was saying in the comment section, they were like, I don't think kids nowadays are required to do anything or accomplish anything. That's why their life is so aimless, right? So they feel like they have nothing to live for, that they have nothing to strive for. But I feel like for Asian kids, at least from particular families, it almost feels like they've got so much on their plate and so much pressure and so much accolades and accomplishments to achieve. They still feel like, what am I even doing this for? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, you're arriving at the same point of like detachedness but one has too much on their plate and one has too little on their plate. Yeah, man, it's tough. That's why this conversation is so tough because you could feel inadequate. You could feel othered in so many reasons. You could feel unloved and just, you could feel like you're, uh, you're, you're helpless for so many reasons, right? And that's why, obviously, you know, we make this video. I can't tell you and help people personally, but, you know, I just want people to know, like, actually, I was surprised at how many posts online we're discussing this as Asian people. So I would honestly say if you really have no community around you and you're looking for someone that shares those same struggles, like you could just Google search and there's a bunch of Reddit posts about it. Yeah. I mean, I'll just say it. I mean, I've been to therapy and I had an Asian therapist and it helped was helpful. And like, uh, you know, like that, I think even just saying that there was a time I wouldn't even have felt comfortable sharing that 
online, to be honest, you know what right. I mean, to anybody. Like, but now I'm just like looking at everything and I'm seeing all these studies and you, 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 everybody knows somebody who knows somebody that something uh, terrible happened to and you, you want to avoid those as much as possible. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I think we just got to normalize the discussion about it and ultimately every, you know, it's on you to kind of, if you take in this information or you, we made somehow, you made, uh, made you feel more comfortable with this discussion for you to bring it into your own fishbowls of life. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, again, just talk about it, you know. I mean, a quick Google search of Asian American mental health, you'll get a whole bunch of posts, people talking about it. There's uh, a lot of other resources out there. We'll leave links down below. But uh, you let us know in the comments down below uh, if this video was helpful for anybody. And, um, yeah, you know, just talk about it in a healthy way. That's the best thing you can do right now um, because there's a whole bunch of other factors. And, and again, this whole situation is actually affecting all other Americans, not just Asian Americans. I don't want to say Asian Americans are the only ones going through it. It's actually a lot of people are going through it. Right, right, right. And in, in, in Asia too, for different reasons. So anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. Share this with somebody who needs to hear it. Share it with a parent. Share it with a younger person. Whatever it is, just normalize the discussion. Uh, you're not crazy for just talking about it, regardless of whatever you know the old culture says. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.